Hi, this is Lexi and Sid of Hess Van Schlemmer Metalworks and Art, home of the Schlemmer Metal Wolves. We are a small but furious family-run welding, fabrication, and metalworks shop with CNC capabilities and now full-scale powder coating operation. We bring unique, affordable quality art to life within the realm of practicality. Whether it's signs, sculptures, railings, shelves, furniture, or even just powder coat for your rims or your patio set, Give us a look, check us out on Facebook or Instagram, or call 618-670-5724. We are Hess Van Schlemmer Metalworks. That was terrible. Allie tried. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here with the Rock Paper Podcast. Let me tell you about my friends over at Naked Vine. Located at 1624 Clarkson Road in Chesterfield, Missouri. Hey, come by and visit them Tuesday through Saturday. I'll have some great live music happening this week. Thursday, August 9th, from Eric Barnes. Friday, August 10th, John Bonham and Friends. And Saturday, August 11th, The Matching Shoe. And this is a uh, Do Not Miss show. If you have been following these guys at all, this will be um, Dominic's last performance with the band. So do not miss The Matching Shoe there on Saturday, August 11th. And then uh, my singer-songwriter, Storytelling show will be back out at Naked Vine on Tuesday, August 14th with Anna Shanoff, Bobby Stevens, and Matt Wynn. So come on out to that show as well. Uh, all these details and more can be found at nakedvine.net. Be sure to follow along with them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, come on out for uh, grab a cold drink, some, co- uh, some great local craft beers, some whiskey, some wine, all kinds of uh, delicious beverages. So... Come on out to the Naked Vine. We'll see you there. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. Um, the podcast is kind of like a... It's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. Hey, everybody. Shane here. I wanted to give a quick introduction to today's show. This audio you're about to hear was recorded live at Naked Vine on July 10th, 2018. And it was uh, features Gavin M., Elliot Pearson, and Sean Corray, part of a Rock Paper Podcast singer-songwriter storytelling show. And uh, this was it was a great night. This is a single mic recording. I just set the mic in the middle of the room and tried to capture the sound the best I could. So this is... Uh, this is all it is, and no no edits, just a live take from the night. So, hope you enjoy the show, and uh, we are doing this again on um, August fourteenth. With uh, it's a Tuesday night, seven to nine at Naked Vine with Anna Shanoff, Bobby Stevens, and Matt Wynn. And it's again, it's a monthly show, so come on out if you can't make that one. Or we're every second Tuesday of the month, so I would love to see you out there again. Uh, Big thanks to Gavin M., Elliot Pearson, and Sean Corray for being a part of this. Uh, please go support those guys. Check out their music and uh, buy the, some whatever records you can and come out and see a live show. All right. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. Guess I'm starting this out. <laughs> Alright, so this first song we played is a song that I wrote called uh, called Come On. It was on my first EP that I did. Was that 2016, I think? Yeah, so it's been a while. So it was on that first one I did, and I recorded it up at uh, Shock City Studios. If anyone knows what I said, but I played it for you. <laughs> Bang. 
Pitch is phenomenal, and your and your guitar uh, uh, dynamics are really great. Um, anyways, so it looks like there's a theme that's probably going to be continuing through the evening. Um, a lot of the times, as a songwriter, I get tired of myself internally and and thinking and feeling about the same things. But the good thing about songs is you can speak about those. Um, so this song is uh, is called "Where Did Your Heart Go?" It's uh, it's just about um, kind of a, uh, a romance that I had last year uh, about this time, and then it kind of fell apart in about two months from now, uh, a year, and I wrote a song in February about it, and this is that song. All right. Perhaps I'll never know 
Elliot. Um, so I played this song for a lot of people, and they all tell me it sounds like a love song. It's really not. It's an anti-love song. <laughs> um, and it's about just, with music, all things are possible. Uh, it's called Furnace. So it's actually on the ground, passed away a little while ago. So it's one of the last songs she heard of mine that I got to share with her before she like passed away. So it's literally our last interaction together. So, uh, so this song is pretty much about, uh, I don't know, finding love, learning from the mistakes you live and learn pretty much. So here we go. I go 
on the road finding time trying to get a little crazy lord knows she said i need a lot of things yeah. we can lay out in a back bed on the floor looking up with our friends thinking once more jack and jim lord you know they got the best in me yeah. and they sing his own right songs. Boy. Um, so uh, there'll probably be a reoccurring theme in my songs just to get that out of the way, to get my anxiety out of the way. Uh, they're all going to be kind of somewhat somewhat about, since this is songwriting storytelling tonight, uh, I'm going get to out, get out of uh, the anxiety mode of worrying about how people are going to perceive the songs. I don't know about these guys, but it's something that is constantly going through my head. Um, no. but no, what's that? I said no. <laughs> uh, so, um, as cheesy as it sounds, uh, I think that the most profound moments in your life, I mean, we all, we're all driven by different things, and, and I think we all are animalistic sometimes in nature, but I think some of the most profound moments that you have are, are uh, when you, when you experience life slowing down, and you're in the present moment, and I feel like the most adequate times that that's happened in my life is when I've, when I've been in love. So a lot of these songs will either be about love or about uh, getting over love or coming into love. This next song is about falling in love versus falling out of love, and uh, it's about making love. <clears throat> it's on an EP that I recorded called Where Do You Call Home. Uh, this song is called Hope I Never Lose This.
of what Gavin's song is about. The uh, song's about a one-night stand and waking up the next morning and feeling absolutely nothing for that person. Uh, <laughs> played a song for my roommate and he said it makes me sound like an asshole, so just know that going in. It's about bad for my health.
driving way too fast for me I'm about to lose it all I watch her grin Cause in the end I know that she don't need new friends I'm just the same And to me she's just a song Oh, 
depressing song of my set, just so let everybody know. Uh, this song is about Alzheimer's, um, and I, I am uh, I'm going to be a part of an event on Saturday at Gaslight in, in uh, St. Louis on the Hill, uh, supporting the Greater Missouri Alzheimer's Foundation. Uh, you can donate online if you'd like, you don't have to be there, but if you are there, uh, streams of the song and purchases of the song will go uh, partially towards uh, also donation for that. But essentially, just to give you an overarching theme and understanding of the song, um, the song's about a, a man and a wife, and the wife uh, has early onset Alzheimer's, and he has to cope with her um, going away uh, slowly while she's still here. Um, and it's it, it wasn't, it wasn't a story that was mine. It was a story of somebody that I knew, but my grandmother did die of Alzheimer's in December. So uh, this person uh, whom it, the story derived from was somebody very close to me, a very uh, important person in, in my life in the past year. So anyways, that's the story for the song, and I'm gonna play it for you. But people watch depressing movies, so I can't do this. Oh, I'm depressing. I like depressing shit. I love it.
Tissues behind the bar for a Thank you. That's great. This song is also depressing. Oh, wait. Kinda. All right. This song's about uh, being on the road, getting some bad news, and not wanting to come back. Uh, but the melody is so like catchy and pretty that you're not even gonna realize that it's sad. <laughs> song's called Petty Crimes. Daydreaming of a plane crash. I don't ever wanna go back. Where I used to be Cold sweats and void and sleep Trying hard not to look back To the memories that we had On the table inside the door Who knows what I'll leave them there for Cut my hair and tell me you lie Drag me back to the morning light the only thing we'll kill is time on the run from every one of our petty crimes. Had a meltdown in Queen Anne, lost in a dream I can't understand. I've got the same old message I'm just clinging on to the wreckage Cut my hair and tell me
I like country songs a lot. So this next song plays called My Time on the Own. It's, uh, it's my attempt at trying to, I guess, put a little twang in there, some kind of way or something. But, uh, but yeah, so I like country music. I love all types of music from uh, Herbie Hancock to John Mayer, Gavin McGraw, Ray Charles. Woo! Uh, that fun stuff. So, uh, so I recently moved out to uh, Cape Girardeau, which is a lot of more backwoods and stuff out there. So it's a little small town. I feel like it fits my mindset a little better. And uh, if you guys haven't noticed, I'm super shy. Don't like the crowd, so love Cape Girardeau though. Really slow pace. <laughs> So a song's called out My Time Went Wrong. Play it for you guys. Now I sit away this garden with no time here to say. I'm getting older and your head ain't on my shoulder. Maybe we were just too powerful to admit that we were spiteful. It knows how to let things go. Yeah, Lord, yeah. But I won't waste my time. Waste my time loving wrong. It's just your sweet disguise With you smiling back at me between really, really talented people, right? Um, uh, so, you know what, I, I was just kind of shooting through my mind as I was thinking about it. So the first song I played, uh, and then the second song that I played, and then the third song, believe it or not, was all about the same person. Uh, and this, this, I guess this will be the last like run through before we take a break, Shane. So I'm gonna finish this little do-ditty with a, a song about the same person. Um, so the first song was about somebody leaving, the second song was about somebody beginning, or something beginning, the third song, obviously we know what that's about. The fourth song, uh, about, uh, this is about knowing and realizing that nothing's going to change, regardless of how far some two individuals go. I don't know, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself religious by any means, in fact, but I would call myself, I, I think there's synchronicities in the universe, and as a songwriter, 
Uh, you can call me weird. As a person, you can call me weird. Most people think I'm strange, for that matter. But um, this song is just about knowing that stuff, knowing that, that, that there's something connecting to people somehow, some way. Uh, I was part of a thing called um, Lo-Fi Cherokee this year, and this is the song that I performed. It's called More Than You'll Ever Know. It's a little festival in St. Louis. They fun people up and down the street. Anyways, I'm done talking. I talk way too much for my own good. <laughs>
Alright, uh, this is the hardest song ever to write. It's about the end of a very long term relationship. I don't think it requires any more explanation than that. It's pretty straightforward. I hate your guts. I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> uh, also lucky. She's like the person that I could, uh, like, pretty much any dark secrets of mine and things I'm afraid to, like, share with other people that other people may know about me. They may turn their backs on me and be like, oh, I can't. Like, she was that person where, like, it was always just good, you know what I'm saying? Just uh, unconditional love, like, all the time. So, so I joke with people all the time. I, like, say she's my ground, but she, you know, she, that was my home, you know what I'm saying? And so me and her, we used to, like, literally talk to each other. Like we were just like we were best friends, you know. Like I would walk in the house as a kid, and I was like, "Oh, what's up, homie?" I'd be like, that's my dog. And she'd be like, "Yeah." <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, all right, here we go. Play a song for you guys. <laughs> Stand alone in the car I 
year and a half and then I was trying to get over to the city but I owned a house and I had to pay my mortgage at the same time of that used to be split between two people by the way those songs are not about my ex-wife um, anyways uh, and I had to split the mortgage that were split between two people so I had to live with my mom's while I paid my mortgage because I couldn't afford the utilities and the mortgage and I was I had this this constant feeling of wanting to be over in the city, all my friends were in the city. All the things that I, where I worked, was in the city. Now I do live in the city, um, but this song is basically essentially about longing to be uh, in your future. It doesn't necessarily have to be about a city. 
or whatever. Uh, but it's just about, you know, you got goals and you want to get to them. Uh, and then when you get there, you kind of bask in all of that. It's also a newer song. It hasn't been recorded or anything. That's the cool thing about these types of things. Uh, Sunset over Midtown in the golden hour, just shine like a star. Remember the time when the wine turned into water, and you just wondered who you are. Then the werewolves, well, they tried to find.
Crippling depression, and Come on. how when you're on those meds, they give you suicide. It seems like a pretty good idea. Uh, I don't take those anymore. Smoke a lot of weed. That's my worst story yet. out there to so start super good so make sure you follow this guy I just want to give him a shout out personally get you guys to show some love show him love like 
it's funny, uh, when you do stuff like this, I'm always a nervous wreck. But most of the time like, I play shows by myself, or either you're like the opener. So you just like play your, like played the old rock house like three times the past four or five months. So you play your like seven songs to get off stage or whatever. But you buy yourself and you just playing your music. But then when you do stuff like this, you go on, you say you listen to everyone else's, and mentally, this is what I go through. And my mind goes, damn, man, I fucking suck. I gotta go home tonight, man. <laughs> and it's like, and then I got, so I have a two hour, I have a two hour drive home and think to myself, okay, on the way home, I'm gonna work on this. I got some recorders on the phone, I'll play them to my, <laughs> I try to work, but, it's funny, like, it's insecurity, but at the same time, like, that's what pushes you to do better. Like, when you play with people that inspire you, you know, send them to around, work harder, go home and work on your craft. So, this is a fun night. And everything. But, anyway, this next song is called I Picture Yourself. So, it's about this girl. Know her, she grew up here in St. Louis together. And then uh, she moved away, started working this job in, like, D.C. with her. So, my doctor mom knows what I'm talking about. But, uh, <laughs> she's giving me this look. But, uh, but I don't know, you hang out with this person here and there and come in and out of town. And you always want to say something, but you never say anything because you don't want to like mess up the friendship and stuff. And everything. But also in the back of my head, I was like, oh man, what if I would have said something? But she's married now and, and doing her own thing. But uh, you see like photos up and stuff. And they'll be like, oh, huggy, huggy. And I'm like, oh, you know. But uh, the story's not over. <laughs> <laughs> So I hear this play this song's called I Picture Yourself, so here we go. Okay. And I follow you, if you know the 
as I say, upon the other side, this again, the world we ever came. at all but um, do you ever like observe the noise around you everybody everybody regardless of who they are there's just all this noise in the world and it's non-stop and it's always going and sometimes you just don't understand at all what the noise means it doesn't it doesn't mean anything in fact uh, so that's what this song's about it's called heart of men
Um, all right. So this one is kind of political. Uh, I'm usually pretty good at gauging a crowd and knowing when to avoid it. Uh, it wouldn't be me if I wasn't offending somebody, so I'm just going to play it. I was going to call it We're All Gonna Die, but Dawes has that song called We're All Gonna Die. Uh, wrote this when, in that brief intermission when uh, it kind of seemed like we all might get nuked. song plays uh, called Sweet Baby. So I lived in California um, for almost a year, close to a year, however long. But uh, I decided one day I was just going to pack up and just drop down there and stuff and everything. Called my friends. I'm like, yeah, I think we're just going to leave. I think it was like, what was it, like a Monday or something? I was like, yeah, I'm leaving at the end of the week. And everyone thought, they're like, what? And I was like, yeah. And it came Friday. I, just, I left. So and I drove out there. Slept in a bunch of truck stops along the way. And then I tried to live out there, super expensive. Some things fell apart. I ended up sleeping on my friend uh, Steph's couch. I won't get kicked off of two Walmart lots. And waking up, washing up in the truck stop bathrooms for almost a year. So it was fun stuff. But uh, I got to hang out on uh, this beach called uh, Moonlight Beach down in Encinitas. So that's where I wrote this song. And I actually met one of the coolest people ever. His name is Tim. 
and he was in a, he was a, he did two tours and he had like two purple hearts, but he fell into hard times and he, had, and he was homeless. He was just like uh, sleeping on the beach. He had a tent and uh, the dude had no money. And that exact same night before, someone stole his shoes from outside his tent and everything. And uh, I felt really bad for the dude. So I just had like a jar full of tip money that I'd just been collecting for like a month that I'd been there. I just walked to my car and just like gave it to him. And, uh, and it's crazy, man, like, the dude gave me, like, a big hug, didn't know who I was, and he started, like, crying. But uh, it just goes to show, too, that, like, uh, you never know who's on hard times or what people are, like, going through. And uh, that was my experience in these cities. And down on the beach, so if you guys ever go to the, go to Moonlight Beach, it's fun. Solo thing. 
Uh, these last two songs are going to be songs from the bands that I used to be a part of. Uh, the first song is called Chemistry. It's uh, a, a band. You know, Elliot and I have known each other for ten years, probably, probably ten years. He's a he's a hell of a, a singer and songwriter, and we've we've had the opportunity to uh, to be around each other. And um, I Elliot has known me since the song I'm about to play with the band that I was in called Parlor Nights. Parlor Nights. Um, this song's called Chemistry. It was on a record that we released in 2012. Um, that's about all I got with that song. The next one, I'll have another story, but I'll just sing it. <laughs> about how uh, friends aren't always going to be there. Uh, 
song specifically about two different friends of mine. Um, it's called Old Friend. It's normally played on a piano, so I'm going to try to. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.